This is my reaction video to the Ravens' 27-13 win over the Saints on, in Monday Night Football. Kind of a workmanlike game, vanilla conservative game plan, very reminiscent of the Patriots game in some ways in Week 3 on the road. Ravens have quite played quite well on the road, I think you have to admit. Uh, now, now here we are, two wins in, in the last 10 days, and get a long break to get some people healthy, and we clearly do need it. I thought we bullied the Saints. You guys can let me know what your perception was. I thought we could block them on our run concepts and generally our pass con. Although I thought their pass rush early in the game was that they were attacking us. Somewhat similar to the Bucks pass rush that gave us some issues early in the game. And I don't mean gave us issues 10 times. I mean three, four, five times gave us issues. And then as we started to run the ball and lean on them a little bit, their, their pass rush ability kind of dissipated. But I thought the, to compare it to the Patriots game, you know, the Patriots scored more points against us. And in fact, we're down there at the end zone. And were it not for an interception by Marlon Humphrey, you know, could have scored even more. And the Saints really had no ability to do that because our defense played so well. I'm going to talk in generalities, to be honest with you, for a moment. And then I'm going to go through my gameplay stuff. This to me, see, and I tweeted this out, this seemed like a, a race car driver keeping his car in third gear. It, this did not seem like we used all of our, quote, best stuff. And I know you, you, know, you want to try to win the game, but this looked like a really conservative game plan. And that happens sometimes when you show up and as a coach, you watch your first six or eight or nine run plays and you're like, hey, we're winning at the point of attack on every one of them. The only, the only run plays that really didn't work was stretch and that toss play and speed option, which I'll talk about those a little bit later. So if you're familiar with my reaction videos, I normally go through, you know, the the first half and go to my notes. I actually have a little bit longer notes for the second half as well. I was able to keep them during the game. So Saints first possession, Olave for 15 on a drifting, you know, pass play from Andy Dalton. And then two runs got nothing. Kamara spun out of a tackle and into the arms of Peters on a first down run. And then Matabike and Bowers are, or uh, Bowser, excuse me, are there to hold Kamara on the on the ensuing play. Bowser with a free run off the right side to force an incomplete pass. Ravens first possession, we didn't get anything going either. It's, it looked like we were having trouble in pass pro. Lamar had a pass batted or or, or tipped near the line of a scrim, line of scrimmage when Deshaun Jackson was wide open on a curl. Uh, they, they showed a zoomed in angle of it. I thought Deshaun Jackson looked good, to be honest with you. Run game got nothing going on that first possession. And Tyron Matthew, who I said in the preview video, to me looked a little less active. He was everywhere on that first possession. I think he had two tackles. Um, option left out of pistol, pistol gave us nothing and, and likely was targeted on a third down where it looked like Lamar thought likely was going to keep running because the Saints were playing man. And instead, likely kind of sat it down or slowed down a little bit and then tried to move to the ball late after Lamar had thrown it out in front. I think that was a misread by likely. So we were forced to punt uh, and fortunate to get a good roll. Their defense just looked really fast. <clears throat> the Saints' second possession is the interception by Hamilton, and I still have a problem with the defensive pass interference call. I understand there's contact between both guys. I do. I, I, it, to me, it looks like Clark is making contact within the five-yard radius, within the five-yard area where he's legally allowed to do so. I, If anything, maybe they call a hold within that five yards, I guess. Maybe, and when we get the All-22, and maybe if I watch it again tomorrow, maybe we'll see that Clark did make contact outside of that five-yard area, and I'm wrong. But I thought that was a big moment, and I don't think that was such a clear call that um, you know we can just say immediately on one view, and yeah, that's pass interference. Smith had Roquan Smith had two great run fits on this second possession on a second and third down after the first down play when there was a pass to the running back out in the flats for seven yards. So second and three, Roquan Smith tackled for like a one-yard gain. And then on the third down play was awesome, forced to punt. And then the Ravens got some big pass plays going on our third drive. Didn't score. We got a third down conversion to Prochet uh, on a curl at a bunch. Actually, we did score. My apologies. I guess it would be our second possession, actually, my bad. A third down conversion to Prochet on a curl out of bunch. Then there was a 12-yard catch by Robinson on a deep end on the second and 13. That was a great throw by Lamar. Both of them were great throws. Then Lamar converted the third and one on an option keeper. The Saints had no idea how to stop the option. Like Our option game was, was like cheating tonight. Although the Saints' run defense was physical, don't get me wrong, and the big gains weren't there early. 
the touchdown play to um, Likely, and I'm going to go over that here. I actually, like I said, I misspoke a moment ago and called it the third drive. It was actually the second drive. Put us up 7-0. Seven, seven that last play there is a, is our sudden change play. It's the same play we did after Gus Edwards' injury against the Bucks last week. Remember, they went to time, TV timeout after Gus got hurt. We come back, we go bunch right A, so three receivers tight lay line to the right, one of them's likely, running back to the right, make it look like QB sweep, and then throw it out there to likely. Same thing we hit uh, um, the Bucks with last week for a touchdown. We now hit the Saints as well. So bunch right A, when teams see that, especially down there near the 20 or 25, they're going to be fired up. They're going to be worried about that play. So could open up the QB sweep. Could open up a complimentary pass play. So cool play, if you ask me. I think there was a personnel change, as you can see on the third and one on the option keeper by Lamar. That was to our left. I think it was 22 personnel. And then we changed personnel. So really calling that a sudden change play is not realistic. It wasn't a sudden change play. It was just a personnel change. We forced the defense to probably change personnel, I would I would presume, and then took advantage of it. So it puts us up 7-0. You know, cool start for for me and as a as a Ravens analyst because you know we're in the lead and we're building toward that run game. I think was I think the run game was starting to get moving a little bit. Again, that was our second possession. Then the Saints' third possession, they showed Tyreek Hill, and I thought it was time for them uh, to to start to at least look at that because of the lack of offense they had had the first two possessions. They go stack bunch right, and Hill keeps it on the left side and just runs over Marlon Humphrey. Uh, Humphrey it gives everything he's got on the tackle. And it was a big collision, but Tyreek Hill, I mean Tyreek Hill, Taysom Hill just kept on going. Now, th- now the cool thing is about our defense, is, is said a lot right there. Humphrey gets knocked down, but three other guys are there to knock Taysom Hill out of bounds. And and maybe close close to being like a tackle out of bounds, for real. So that was, that was awesome to see. Saints get a, a penalty on their O-line, set them back. And then just an amazing stunt on third and eight. One of, one of those things that maybe isn't talked about enough. Houston gets a sack on third and eight. Awesome. You know, Houston's playing great, but give Queen credit. Queen picked the left guard from depth. So like a blitz, runs into the left guard, picks him. Houston's able to slide underneath that. Uh, and through three possessions, <laughs> you know, the Saints have not gotten any run game going at all. Kamara has done nothing. He did have one great catch on a second and 20 to get away from the end zone. Our third possession was not, you know, not productive at all. We got nothing on the third. A few short runs by Drake. We had an opportunity for a big play on third and nine. And I'll digress here for a moment. Lamar was pressured. And like I said, the Saints pass rush, I thought early, was giving us problems. Then he fumbled the ball where the ball slipped out of his hands. He picked it up. And it's a rocket of a throw by Lamar. I don't know how far it was. To me, it looked like 45, 50 yards up the right sideline. And Deshaun Jackson's there. There's a great play by, I think, Alante Taylor, the rookie DB, to knock the ball away. But Deshaun Jackson looked dangerous. You tell me what your perception was. To me, he looked like a guy that can contribute for us. You know, 6, 8, 10 catches a game? No. You know, I know he hurt his hamstring, so who knows what his status is. Um, Saints' fourth possession. They line up Taysom Hill on second and third down, I believe. They run a, a inside handoff with Taysom Hill at running at, at quarterback, and then the inside handoff to the running back. And Oway and Peters are there. And then there's a short pass by Dalton. I know Dalton makes quick decisions, gets the ball out quick. I understand those things, but when it's third and two, you know, <laughs> to me the route's got to be run more than one yard downfield. Clark made a nice play on the tight end to force a punt, and we get to our fourth possession, which I'm going to pull up here. And I thought this was where we really started to take control. That's our fourth possession there, taking over, taking over up seven nothing. Nine minutes left in the second quarter, I believe, and we go play action pass multiple times on first down here. So, like, let's look at the first play, play action pass to likely. That's it was maybe it was missed. I think it was a little overthrown. I think likely's route t- started to veer a little bit towards the sideline some, but I could be wrong. I don't think it was as poorly thrown as it looked on first glance. When they showed the replay, I was like, okay, it wasn't as far out there, but still it's a ball that we would like to complete. It's a first down pass play. Then we get a huge play on an RPO to Deshaun Jackson, a great play by Lamar. The second and 10 from the negative 19, it's an RPO. He gets to his third option, so he didn't give the ball. 
goes out into the flats. It's basically, to me, guys, it's the same play that we missed Tylen Wallace on for the touchdown against the Bengals on the 4th and 1. I think it was the Bengals. Uh, to me, it looked like the same play. Huge gain to Deshaun Jackson, but Morgan Moses downfield. So it's a good call. Second and 15. And Lamar makes another unbelievable play, being pressured, gets the ball to Davis out there for eight. And that was that was critical because then we convert to third and eight to Oliver on an under route. One of those under routes that people have been saying for weeks, like you're not going to convert that if you throw a three-yard pass on third and eight. Yes, we can. And we did. It went for 20. You know, you got to force the coverage to match up with two guys and stay on the leverage side. In this case, look like the Saints blew the coverage. Good decision by Lamar getting it out there. You know, huge gain. Option for six, Hill for one. Then we get a third and three. We go empty and and fake it to Duve in motion, and Lamar keeps it for a big run. I, th- I think it was a 17-yard run, maybe 18-yard run. Yeah, it went from the negative 47 to the positive 36. So another first and 10. And this is our, this is our third first and 10 of the, of the drive. The first one was play-action pass. The second one was an option keeper for Lamar for six. And we go RPO to Prochet. Big hit. Thought it almost could have been helmet to helmet, but it looked like the DB got under. Prochet flips over on his on the top of his helmet for 12. First and 10 could have been a touchdown to Demarcus Robinson. I mean, it's just let's just say it. And I think Troy Aikman handled it all night long, handled things professionally. He seemed to be very mature about it. The, and he recognizes, like, you know, quarterbacks miss throws. He knew that. He, he missed throws himself. Remember our Thursday night football game against Tom Brady 10 days ago? Brady missed plenty of throws. So that one could have been a touchdown. Clearly, on that first and 10 from the 24. And then, on the second and 10, this was critical. But this is a blown play. It This is the third time, maybe the fourth, where it looks like the running back's on the wrong side. I don't know what that is. I've never seen it this much. It Maybe it's only three times. So I'm talking about the second and 10 from the positive 24. Fourth play from the bottom of your screen there. Twin slot A. It looks like Lamar is waiting for the running back to mesh, and the running back's on the wrong side. I mean, Lamar should recognize it, for real, but he's looking at multiple things pre-snap. He could be looking at – he could have two plays called in the huddle. That could be one of the reasons why we're getting out quicker. You know, tonight it seemed like, and a little bit against the Bucks, he could have two plays called. So he may be scanning the defense to look for one of the plays. The running back's got to get on the correct side. You know, Lamar could help there too, but if he's looking for one, two, three things pre-snap, it might be a lot to ask. So – Lamar keeps it behind Moses. I think it's the one where he kind of pushes Moses down and gets 12. Unbelievable play. And at this point uh, in my notes, I'm not showing them to you here, I was like, where is Tyron Matthew? He's gone. Drake for a 10-yard, I mean, excuse me, Drake for a 10-yard catch on second and 10 from the 12. I think it was 02 personnel. Uh, excuse me, 12 personnel. So Drake was on the field with two tight ends. Ricard was not on and two other receivers. Drake into the right flats. And then the next play, Easy option play for a touchdown. And at this point, if you couldn't see the game flow, you know, developing, you you, you were probably not paying attention because we were just physically dominant. Unfortunately, though, a lapse to me in our <clears throat> a lapse to me in our in our defensive focus. You know, the Saints go right downfield to end the half with two minutes in eleven personnel, throwing the ball all over the field, despite a really great coverage play by Roquan Smith on Kamara in the right flats. Great tackle. Dalton was finding people all over. It seemed to me like the Saints were going twin slot, so that's twins to the field and the tight end and another receiver to the boundary to our right, and they were attacking to our right. He challenged Humphrey one time downfield against Olave uh, in the end zone here near the end of the second quarter, and he was lucky that Humphrey couldn't elevate and get the pick. Olave basically was playing defense. Olave did convert a third down there when we when we faked a blitz with uh, Marlon Humphrey, and then he had to run out from inside leverage to try to play zone, and Olave was able to convert the, the third down. Dalton found Callaway twice over the middle and nearly hit him for a touchdown. And this is why I say, like, lack of focus. We have been balling out on defense. To me, it looked like we were playing softer coverages at this point. To end it, to end the half, to finish the half, it looked like we were playing softer coverages. Let's let them move the ball downfield. And I thought we did that late in the Bucks game, too. Both situations work, don't get me wrong. That could be an indication that we're a little too quick with that decision because, let's be honest, we have blown games kind of playing softer coverages later in games because the Saints had done nothing up to that drive. They're able to get a field goal. Like I said, could have been a touchdown, man. That's a huge moment. 14-3 at the half. Kamara's done nothing or not done much. Excuse me. The running game has struggled, but the Saints are still hanging around. I thought 11 personnel was going to be 
<clears throat> what the Saints were going to go to because they found something, you know, in our two scoring drives, like like the announcer said, you know, the, and I thought Aikman was not nearly as bad tonight as I anticipated, for real. I was anticipating someone I didn't want to listen to, but he wasn't that bad. Low energy, but not that bad. Uh, the Ravens had spread the ball around. A lot of guys touching the ball. I think they said nine guys touched the ball, likely with the touchdown catch on a design play. A lot of four-yard runs uh, and changing in personnel. We had not had those issues with, with the play clock to this point, maybe once in the first half. Lamar had three big runs, you know, two or three really amazing plays, the throw to Jackson on the RPO, uh, the, the somehow getting it out to Mike Davis for an eight-yard play on the second and 20 or something like that. <clears throat> the great throw to Deshaun Dak Jackson on the right sideline that, that Alante Taylor knocked away. You know, Lamar is playing great. And, and missed throws, yes. Okay, there are a few. And the defense have been tight, really tight. Um, I, I was really impressed. I, did I expect our defense to come out here and do this? I thought we could, but I didn't know, you know, what it, what it exactly would look like. So 14-3. Go into the half, and then our fir our first possession of the third quarter, I just thought it was terrible. I didn't think there was any flow to it at all. I just did not. I thought I felt like we had an opportunity to put this team away, and I think so. I think that will be our fifth possession, first possession of the third quarter. Score still fourteen three, and I think we come back on our sixth possession. And we're just utterly dominant. Utterly dominant. I mean, look at the runs. And it's all counter wind. Well, three of them are counter wind back. So we're in the pistol. Lamar's open in one way. One way the running back is going back the other side, following a pulling guard and usually Ricard. Eight yards, 12 yards. Completion to Hill underneath for nine. We, we physically dominated them here. I did not like our play call. On second and ten here. I think it was an option to Drake. And not that the option wasn't hitting. Because look, look, you got two previous plays on this drive. Option keep for six. Option keep for five. No problem. But in my opinion, if we're going to run the ball there, I don't know why we didn't go back to counter wineback. Look at the look at the three pl three plays. You know, this earlier in the drive, right? Eight yards. And then there's a BS penalty on um I can't I can't remember who it was on. I think it was on it was a big gain to the right hand side. I think it was they called it on Stanley on the back side. I only saw it once, so I didn't see a penalty. And then there's a nine yard gain to Hill on a counter windback. I don't just I just don't know why we didn't go back to it. So we settled for a field goal to put us up 17 3. And at that point, like let's be honest, you knew what the status of the game was. This is a game that we had a great chance to win. Saints six possession. Had two different strategies in one. They were able to go down and cut it to 17-6. All right? Now, this is the possession where Houston gets the sack. And to me, I'm going to be honest with you, I still think it's a forced fumble. I know that the review confirmed it. To me, it looks like the ball is loosening in Dalton's grip right as he's hitting the ground. But maybe he, maybe he's already in enough contact with the turf as that begins to occur. So what I'm saying is I understand they confirmed it that he held on to the ball long enough but here's my question for you if Andy Dalton was a receiver and he caught the football controlled it for an instant and then hit the ground the way that that just happened is that called a catch or is that called a, a incomplete pass I'm just not sure about the consistency sometimes I know that those are different situations to me it looked like the ball was coming out a little bit but I mean what do you say about what do you say about Justin Houston man you know the guy is unbelievable right now Mathematically, what he's doing with the number of snaps he's playing is is not right. It shouldn't be happening, you know, for real. Uh, Humphrey gets an edge blitz to get a sack and hold have us hold on to a 17-6 lead. You know, so that was a good call. And then our seventh possession is just a mess. We went three and out with three passes. After dominating them physically on the sixth possession, that's what that's what's so confusing for me sometimes. And you and you may not see it that way. I mean, our sixth possession counter windback was wrecking them. The RPO stuff I thought was giving them problems all game. 
Now you guys tell me what you what you saw. That seventh possession, it seemed like we just lost sight of, you know, who we were. Three passes. Then the RPO to likely that he that he drops. The play before that, we had ran a speed option. Actually, I'm, I think I'm talking about the eighth possession here. Sorry. We had moved down. The eighth possession was just as much of a mess as the seventh, but we waited to turn it into a mess until we got into basically field goal range. This The third down play is the drop by likely. Okay. Prior to that, I think we had had trouble with the clock twice in terms of the play clock. But the speed option call to Drake, I don't know if you guys know what speed option is, but the running back and the quarterback running to the same side and pitching it off of someone. I just We're running QB counter windback, and we're wrecking them with it. We could have run QB counter read. Could have run our RPO. I know that likely drops a play on the next, you know, the third down play, the ensuing third down play. But the second down speed option play, we lost five. That was a terrible call. We settled for a 41-yard field goal. It's 20-6. to six. And to me, like, you know, the game should be over. It really, the game should be over. We had, I think, I don't think I had mentioned it. Lamar missed Robinson in the end zone. Okay, fine. Aikman covered it professionally and mature, you know, and it's just reality. He did. Then we missed Robinson on another third down that I thought would have, you know, Robinson's getting a, getting the first down or he's walking into the end zone. So there's there's been plays where, in my opinion, you know, Lamar's just off target. It's two or three times a game. Maybe not every game, but it was tonight. It didn't matter because we physically bullied that team. And Lamar also hit some passes, you know, that didn't count. Like I said, the great throw to Deshaun Jackson up the right sideline, like 50 yards, wasn't caught. It was a great play by the DB. The RPO where he got to the third read, Deshaun Jackson up the right sideline, you know, for like a 20-yard gain. Got called back because Morgan Moses downfield. So he's making plenty of good throws, but those are going to be the difference between us beating a good team and, and losing. For real. Those are going to be part of the difference. And inconsistent play calling, like they talked about. The entire seventh possession was a CF. The end of the eighth possession, where we took a 26, 20 to 6 lead, that one was just as poor. All right. Then this this turnover, I mean, <laughs> our D-line, what's our interior D-line doing that we're now tipping so many passes? Matabike had one tonight. Calais Campbell had one early, and then Brent Urban knocked one up in the air that Justin Houston picked off. If any of us predicted this level of pay, play by Houston, we would have been called crazy. He did have five sacks last year, and he missed some time. He could, he should have had like three more sacks, maybe four. He got blatantly held three times where he's got a clear path to the quarterback last year, and it was only called once. Two other times it was just not called. One was Green Bay. One was the Bengals when he was just eating up the left tackle for the Bengals, and I can't remember who the third one was. Maybe it was at home against the Vikings. I think it was. But he's just, what he's doing is, look, sacks are sometimes out of your control, right? It might be sprint out to the other side. You might win your matchup. What Justin Houston is doing is, I mean, this is a historic run as far as Ravens edge rushers. I'm not talking about the NFL. You know, those of us that have been Ravens fans for a long time, we can remember when guys got – Suggs has been on a roll like this before. This is going way back. I think there was a run that Peter Bowyer had over like a six-game stretch, had like seven sacks or eight maybe, something like that. You know, those guys, Elvis Doomerville had that run of ten games where he had a, a ridiculous number of sacks one year. To me, this is in line with those guys. He had five sacks last year. What's he got, seven and a half this year? Eight, eight and a half, I don't know, seven and a half, eight and a half? He had two and a half tonight. He had the interception. Very easily could have had a forced fumble, and Drake punches it in for a 27-6 lead. Game's over. Look, you're going to complain about Peters and Clark's effort, and I am too, all right, on that 41-yard touchdown on the Saints' ensuing possession. No problem. But the coverage sucked. It's two receivers on the offense's right on Peters' side into the boundary. There is Marcus Peters. And then Patrick Queen is the inside linebacker who's he's like Queen is like two yards from the hash. And there's two receivers outside of him. And only Marcus Peters is over there. Now there's a safety who's rolling to that side. But what I'm saying is my point is number one goes vertical and number two, the tight end runs a deeper out. That's the guy who catches the ball. It's no way for Peters to cover both of those guys. Something coverage wise on our left side into the boundary was a problem. And I hopefully I can do a film study video on it. 
know, they capitalize. Does does Marcus Peters need to keep playing and get that guy out of balance? Absolutely. Does Chuck Clark need to keep playing football? Yes, no doubt. But something was weird with our coverage on our left side into the boundary against a tight end and a wide receiver. So so it, they closed to within 27-13. And I know that we finished the game, won the game by 14. But, man, you would, you would like to finish the game 27-6. And in my opinion, you know, we missed – one pass to Robinson, the third down, not the one in the end zone because Drake scored on that drive anyway, so it didn't matter in terms of the overall score. But we missed one pass to Robinson on the third down where we had to settle for a field goal. I think that could have been another four points, getting us to 31. I really honestly think that the the field goal, really poor play calling by uh, Greg Roman and our staff to end the eighth possession. You know, We ended up with a field goal there. I think we could have had that be another four points. I think we should have scored 35 points today. I really do. This reminds me of the Patriots game where if we play this game a hundred times, I think the Ravens win an overwhelming majority of the games between between these two teams that played tonight. And I know there's Saints fans who will say, well, we're missing a lot of people. And we had guys go down during the game. I agree. That's football in 2022 for whatever reason. You know, we didn't have Mark Andrews. We didn't have Rashad Bateman, who's out for the year. We didn't have Gus Edwards. We didn't have J.K. Dobbins. Still don't have David Ojabo. You know, we just picked up Roquan Smith. Tyus Bowser just came back. I think we have we have similar injury situation to them. And I think if we play a hundred times, we win the overwhelming majority of these games. This those those matchups. Now, having said that, we're going to play better teams in this Saints, and there's a lot of positives here, but there are some negatives. So let's mention them: sloppiness or things we want to do better. The play call stuff, like it, it wasn't all game. It's just, in, it's just a, a, like two instances, not two plays, but it was that one drive down near like the 30 yard line, 25, 20, somewhere around there, maybe closer. And then I think in the first half, there was one instance, maybe. And I'm going to be honest with you, like it's weird. I want to look at it and see if I can figure out where is this occurring? Is this occurring when we're making personnel changes? Because we, we damn near make personnel changes on offense on every snap. So I don't know that it's happening because of personnel changes. I'm not sure why it's happening. That's point number one. That was bad. Number two, you know, likely dropping the RPO. That was a sick play call. Likely dropping that is just a missed opportunity. It's a third down, a chance for him to get the first down because Duve is there to block. And, it, and maybe the ball was tipped. So I think Aikman mentioned that it was tipped. Maybe it was. But if it's tipped, then he's still like 10 or 12 yards for likely to catch the ball. The ball's got to be caught. Right? It's a missed opportunity. We had the, the ball up the right sideline to Deshaun, ja- Deshaun Jackson on the RPO for Morgan Moses' downfield. That's now the second time that's been called on us this year. I think it was called on Daniel Falele. All right? And back to the snap situation, and some of you not going to like this. Like Lamar getting upset, there's nothing wrong with that. Like that, we're they're grown men. Get upset. I wonder. I wonder if he'd be cool with someone coming up to him saying, "Hey, you need to make those two throws that you missed." Now, do I think anyone should do that? No. Would I want anyone to do that? No. He's my favorite player. But my point is, he needed to be checked. He needed to be. Like, if somebody's messing something up, the O linemen or the coaches. Okay, you made mistakes too, and it's a team game. So, yeah, I'm okay getting mad, slamming the ball on the turf. I've seen it enough times. I don't know about you. I've seen it enough. I've seen it twice now as it relates to other guys. Nobody's coming up to him and showing him up when he misses a pass, and it's happened often enough that I feel comfortable mentioning that, and if you don't like it, I'm not sure what to tell you. Like, it's just reality. It's what happened in New Orleans tonight, and it's happened in other games too. And it's time to move on from that behavior. That's just my opinion. All right, another you know weird one that I thought is going away from the running game. Like, <laughs> we're bullying them. We're bullying them. And there's play call situations where, like the speed option I talked about. Speed option is a great concept. I'm not in my experience. It's often a check call with the quarterback. So the quarterback sees like a certain alignment and then checks the speed option because there's no force player out there. So I got no problem with it as a play concept. But when we're gashing them with downhill runs, what's the point? I thought it was a terrible call. And, I, and again, I think it was eighth possession. I could be wrong. And and look, the toss play at the end of the game out of pistol. Have you ever seen toss out of pistol? I, I've never seen it work. 
So, like, we finished with 188 rushing yards on 40 carries. So that's 4.7 yards per carry. A little lower than than what we had that we've been doing sometimes when a run games weren't working. Well, why? Well, we had those two plays which lost a combined 10 yards. We sh- we should have been at like 42 carries for like 210, 215, 212 tonight, in my opinion. Because there was another possession where we went, like I said, we threw the ball three times. And and you know, Lamar's missed throws, the bad play calls. Uh, the drop by likely on third down. To me, that's just in Dick and, and, you know, look, Brady misses throws. Aikman mentions that everyone misses throws. So if you're triggered by all that, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's just reality. All of those things contributed to me saying this was a sloppy finish. I was, I was real pissed off about our opening possession of the third quarter. I thought it was wasted. We were winning every block at the point of attack and that, possession three passes from a play calling standpoint i thought was terrible so we have some things to clean up you know we do defensively what can you say about our old dudes man justin houston calais campbell oh wow calais campbell that hit that he had on andy dalton i think it was a stunt uh i thought dalton was going out of the game man that that was a shocking hit and a thud roquan smith is the real deal those run fits the same guy who made t- the best two run fits tonight, I'm talking about as an inside linebacker, the same guy who made t- the best two run fits tonight on any run play on either side of the ball, Saints or Ravens, was Roquan Smith. He's also the same guy who made the best coverage play as an inside linebacker tonight when he covered Kamara Man with all that field to work with from the hash, maybe a little outside the hash, to the sideline. He's a special talent. He makes a huge difference. I thought Kyle Hamilton played well. I thought he was a laser on two tackles. I think it was Cole Jackson mentioned on Twitter. I saw it before I filmed a reaction video. Man, Kyle Hamilton is balling on special teams. And I know you don't draft someone with the 14th pick to play on special teams that much, but when someone is that good, yeah, you let him play there. He is balling on kickoff. Chuck Clark I actually thought played well. I know there was a DPI, and I know that he had the, the poor effort. On the touchdown to Johnson, the tight end, who's a huge tight end. But I thought Clark played well, really did. And I'm not I'm not someone that just gives Chuck Clark a pass on a lot of things. I thought he played quite well. Humphrey was just rarely challenged downfield. There was a short pass to Olave where Humphrey's dropping out in zone from lining up on the line of scrimmage, threatening a blitz, and Olave's wide open. There was another time where I thought Olave did beat him man, beat him man on a um on a short pass route, but no one's challenging him deep. That in my opinion, like we've got to use that in terms of our coverage calls and just rely, hey, they're not challenging him. Even the Bills didn't challenge him. The Bengals didn't challenge him. I mean, really, I think he was challenged in two games. The Patriots game, I can't remember the other one. Maybe Well, the Bucks last week, all right, the Bucks. They went after him some and had some success. Our defense playing that way tonight should be super exciting. Uh, Lamar wasn't asked to do a ton. In the second half, when it became obvious that we were just running the ball down their throats. One thing that I think we've all noticed, begun to notice here lately, last three or four games, is we're getting more pressure with rushing less guys. There are some times we're bringing five, but we're getting more pressure. You can see we had seven quarterback hits today. The Saints only had two. And some of our quarterback hits should count as two. Like the one that Calais Campbell had. That was a monster hit on Andy, Andy Dalton. I know that... People have speculated about the schedule being easier, you know, coming out of the bye. And I agree that it certainly looks easier, but you never know how the schedule is going to work out. You never know what one of the one or two of those teams might go on a three, four, five game winning streak. Rewind back five weeks in the NFL. The Seattle Seahawks were not considered to be this badass physical juggernaut of a football team that they are now that they have Kenneth Walker and he's running the ball and Geno Smith is continuing to play at a high level. My point is one of the teams we play two, three, four, five weeks from now might be on some type of run like that. We shouldn't assume that all of these are going to be wins. But if we're able to do this, and look, we only had 319 total yards, so you might say well, the offense didn't play that good. I disagree with you completely. There were situations where we ran the ball in known run situations, like a second and two or third and two, and we ran the ball because we understood we were going to get the first down. 23 first downs overall, 9 of 15 
on third down efficiency, 65 plays. Could we throw the ball more against this team? Yes, we could have. We missed some opportunities with drops. We missed some opportunities with Morgan Moses being downfield. The the corner for the Saints, Alante Taylor, made that great play on that deep pass by that unbelievable throw by Lamar down the right sideline. And then we missed a couple throws by Lamar. I mean, just accept it. I know people get triggered by it, but that's all. Those are all things that, if you ask me, turned a 319-yard total offense performance. I really think we could have had 400 total yards. I do. If some of those mistakes are cleaned up. So let me know what you think of my thoughts overall, what you think of the way that we played. Well, I mean, defensively, how do you not? How do you not feel excited to watch our defense play with Roquan Smith? I still worry about our slot coverage at times, and I have some concerns about our read coverages where Marcus Peters is asked to read the release and match the the, – the, he doesn't appear as comfortable with our match coverages, but I can't prove it, okay? He would be – I think he's quite comfortable when playing man, but he doesn't appear as coverage as comfortable in some of our coverages, and I'm not sure why that is. So physically dominant win, we should be excited. I know I am. It's like it's like 12.30 a.m., and I'm still up recording this video for you guys. Appreciate you guys checking the video out. Let me know what you think of my thoughts. I may have missed some elements here uh, in terms of the overall prognosis for where we're going to be. You know, when we finish the 17-game regular season, you guys, if you watch my preview video for this game, know I think we need to get to 12 wins before we play the Bengals. I think it's entirely possible if we can go on a run and and we can out physical people you know like we did the saints tonight appreciate you guys checking the video out give me some feedback in the comments section and let me know what film study videos you guys would like to see me focus on first thing tuesday night